to God that is, is real. real. It's a beautiful Monday morning, and uh, we welcome you to the broadcast today. We are on day 11 of our study, verse by verse, of James, the book of James. Mm-hmm. We're looking at chapter 3, verses 1 through 6 today. And so we will review the quiz from Friday, and we will also talk verse by verse on James here on the tongue and the importance of words, especially in a faith wall. So stay with us. Don't go away. We want to hear from you. It's an interactive broadcast. We'll be right back. Welcome to today's edition of God is Real. Brought to you by Faith International Christian Center in Bradenton, Florida, United States of America. We invite you to study the word of faith with us for undeniable proof of his name Israel. Because God is real. Amen. Praise God. Welcome, Amen. everyone. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Monday. Yeah. Good morning to all of us. Last Great. night, lots of lightnings and yeah. And uh, what do you call that? Rain, thunder, yeah. thunder and rain. Um, yeah, it knocked our power out for a short time. Knocked my printer off. We, we don't have a printer today. Yeah, we were very concerned last night that we will not have connection today or something. But we got it. Praise yeah. God. The yeah. Lord is good. Yes. Yeah, and uh, we're so happy to have you today. God bless yeah. you. Thanks for joining us. We're studying James verse by verse. We're on day 11. James mm-hmm. chapter 3, verses 1 through 6 today. Okay. That's what we're going to look at. And we appreciate you staying with us. And also take a look at Friday's quiz answers. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody did real well on it. But uh, we'll take a look at it anyway. And... Uh, and make sure that everybody understands it okay. So let's go see what our scripture is for the day, Marlon. What is our scripture? Okay. From scripture James, uh, from James 3, verse 5. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire can do. That's what I'm going to talk about today. The little member of the tongue, mm-hmm. how it relates to your walk of faith. How it re- relates to your life in general. Mm-hmm. And so uh, you'll want to hang in there with us on this one. Uh, I believe you'll learn something today. Praise God. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we don't have a whole lot online this morning. Who we got online on? Yes. Good morning to the Two for Christ. It's last, hey, uh, Clifford and Charlene. last Friday we were there. In their yeah, place. They did a great job. Yes. Amen. In Good spite morning. of the equipment breaking, but. Anyway, we got that fixed now. Yes. Sister Charlene and Brother Cliff, good morning. Good morning. Also, good morning to Dorothy Vicente. She hey, is up already. Up uh, running early. Three hours earlier than yeah. here. Um, also, Brother Frank uh, Barn Grover, good morning. Hey, Frank. Frank's back in town, yes, I think. Yes, he is home. And so, welcome home, Brother Frank. Good morning, Lino Andrew and Lino Beverly. Good morning. Vances. The Millers, Sam and Sister Tess, good morning. It's with. It's windy in the um, mountain Idaho. home, Idaho. Idaho. Wow. Good morning. And also, Brother T and Sister T, good morning. Good morning. Are you in Chicago or are you home? Still vacationing. Brother T. Yes. I know you were on your way to Chicago over the weekend, so and it looked like you drove, so I doubt you'd be back home. You must be watching from Chicago. Anyway, welcome. God yes, bless you. Good sir. morning. And Sister Laan Lang come in the Philippines. Also, good hey, Laan. afternoon. Hey, God home. bless you. Yes. You're home. You're I don't know how you home. did that, man. You must have just run straight up there and straight back. No rest. That's amazing. Brother John Javed also. Hey, John. Is joining. Good afternoon in Pakistan. And um, the Miles. Good morning to Sir Judy and, and uh, Brother Do. Good morning. Praise God. Good morning to the miles. Praise Amen. God. Amen. 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 All right. Well, we're going to take James chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, and take a look at them, a close look at them. But before we do, let's head over to our um, survey, the quiz. Okay. And let's take a quick peek at that from Friday. James 2.23 mm-hmm. refers to a scripture being fulfilled. 
Which one was it? Most everybody got that. It's Rome, uh, Genesis 15, 6 is the answer to that. Mm -hmm. I had a couple of different options, but Genesis 15, 6 is where it was told that Abraham, you know, you're going, your seed is going to be like the stars in the sky. Mm -hmm. So uh, question number two, why was Abraham the friend of God? And uh, the answers were because Abraham interceded with God for Sodom. No, that's not the reason he was a friend. Because he was a mighty warrior? Well, he was, but that's not the reason. It was because of his faith. Because of his faith. Abraham is the father of faith. And so all of you got that right. Question three. What does James mean in chapter 2, verse 24, that man is justified by works and not by faith only? So, um, I think everybody got that right, that the God kind of faith produces works automatically. They're inherent in real faith. Mm -hmm. It's just an automatic reaction because you have believed so intently, and so you act upon it because of that. So, that was correct. Everybody got that one. How, how was Rahab justified? Everybody got that one. Mm -hmm. Maybe my questions are too easy here, Orla. By works from her strong faith in the God of Israel. Now you understand we're talking about a works after having believed, not working to believe mm -hmm. on all these. Now listen up. We're not working to believe. It is works after we believe. Because we believe. That's because we believe. believe. That is correct. That's so you make sure you keep that straight. Mm -hmm. People confuse it. We're not teaching you that you can work to receive your salvation. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. But because you believe you are saved, That's there will you, be works that follow. Yeah. That's there, why you do something because of what you believe. That's right. We live what we believe. Mm -hmm. All right. Question five. Does James's message contradict Paul's writing on being saved by faith and not a works? It seems like that they do because James talks about faith without works is dead. Paul says only faith can save you. Uh, paraphrasing, of course. Mm -hmm. So the answer to that is, and everybody got that. No, James is teaching works is inherent inside of real faith. Mm -hmm. So uh, you guys did real good on that quiz. And uh, so we appreciate you answering that. Yes. We had a few people join us. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, oh, our cousin, oh, Richard, and probably Richard had a big glitch on for his birthday uh -oh. yesterday. That was yesterday, yes. So happy birthday again to Richard. Happy birthday, <laughs> Richard. The whole month is yours. And Zen, the whole and month Zen is yours. And Zen also, yes. Amen. Birthday happy too. birthday. But Richard had a big glitch on. Pig, what is that in, in English? Huh? The pig. Glitch on. Yeah, that's the Roast, barbecue roasted. pig. The whole thing sitting the there thing. looking at you. <laughs> so yummy. Oh, my goodness. All right. So here some. is the link for your quiz today. Yes. Arlen's got it in the comment section. I've got it on the uh, page uh, of the website in the notes. So you can get it here and do the quiz. All right. Who else? Yes, we have uh, Brother... Brother Vanya and Sister hey, Priscilla Vanya. in India. Amen. Priscilla, good God afternoon. Evangelist Maria Hill in Canada. Good morning. Hey, Maria. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Thank you, guys. Praise God. Yes. The, you already mentioned the Dukes. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So let's read what Georgia had to say uh, or okay. has to say for today, and then we're going to talk more. Okay. Here's Georgia. Uh, Can you read it? Yeah. We uh, we are what we say. Our mouth chooses blessings or cursing. It's our spiritual weapon. Okay. Um, we have studied personalities. Some have a person personality that will criticize, if not themselves, others. As long as they are walking in the fruits of the Spirit, they will have self-control. We need to think before we speak. Yeah. Some needs filters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's it's today's uh, trend also, filters. Yep. Okay. So since 
out of the heart the mouth speaks, then we have to know how to get the right words in our heart. Yeah. This is done by being careful what we see, hear, and think on. Absolutely. The gates that go into the heart. Yes. Eye gate, ear gate. That's exactly right. Yeah. Go ahead. As a teacher, we need to be very attentive to the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. He is the one that leads us to truth through the word. Uh, truth only comes from the word, not man's thoughts and conclusions. Right. If we study the word and think on it, our teaching will always point to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Georgia. Very good. Mm -hmm. and, from uh, Georgia, yours. Good word for sure. Praise yes, God. Amen. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Well, God is great, isn't he? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Sandra joined us. Hey, Sandra in Mr. Ohio. Sandra, yes. Good morning. Sandra has been Ohio. a faithful viewer for many years, and we appreciate her so yes. much. God bless you, dear Sandra. How, how was everyone's church service yesterday? Anybody got any comments on where you went to church? Mm. How how it went? How the Holy Ghost moved? Any miracles? Anything you want to share? Type it in there. We love to hear that. We love to hear that. Praise God. All right. Well, let's start. We're going to start by reading the uh, entire uh, verses 1 through 6. Then we're going to go back and individually take them one at a time. Okay. <clears throat> okay. This is James um, 3, mm -hmm. verse yeah. 1. Yep. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Okay. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn, out, we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, uh, which... Though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small hem, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Right. Go one more. Six. And a tongue is a fire, a world of iniquities, so is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the force of nature right. and it is set on fire of hell exactly mm -hmm. so let's go here to our first verse read that please my brethren be not many masters knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation okay so we you and i mm -hmm. humans are speaking spirits that means we're the only creation of God mm -hmm. that speaks. I'm talking about earthly creation. No animal does, in other words. A parrot will mock you, but uh, it doesn't carry on a conversation like we do. We are speaking spirits. Mm -hmm. And God has shown us in this and in the scriptures that our words, what we speak, come from our heart. And that's very important principle that you need to understand. A spiritual principle that you need to get hold of. So let me go to that here. Matthew 12, 34. Okay. Old generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So James here is teaching us the law of faith. Mm -hmm. We'll have what we say. That's what he's trying to drive home to you. <clears throat> that you are today what you said yesterday. And that you'll have what you say tomorrow. Because it's a law of faith. You have what you say. Mm -hmm. So next verse is Mark eleven twenty three. Read that please. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. So he'll have what he says. Mm -hmm. Wow. So James is showing us here that there is also a dark side to this. We can move mountains when operating in this properly. Or we can create huge mountainous issues in our lives. By what we say. 
And it comes from, again, what you believe, what you're convinced of. So the tongue becomes a fire that sets on fire events in your life, in your body and in your life, the Bible says. Sets the forest ablaze, so to speak. So we're going to look at this in, in detail here this morning. And he starts by telling you don't, you shouldn't, everyone be teachers because the teacher is going to get be held to a higher standard of, of accountability mm -hmm. greater judgment so he's warning make sure it's a calling of god and not just something you want to do especially for recognition or pride or you know self-exaltation mm -hmm. So James is instructing here the teachers that they're going to be held to a higher standard of judgment or accountability because they are instructing others. Mm -hmm. They need to be certain and absolutely sure that they are correct. Hallelujah. So that's what he's saying here. So we read that in the Amplified Mm -hmm. And it's a little clearer. Read that, please. Okay. Not many of you should become teachers serving in an official teaching capacity. My brothers and sisters, for you know that we who are teachers will be judged by a higher standard because we have assumed greater accountability and more condemnation if we teach incorrectly. So that pretty much says it all. Not many of us should become teachers. There is an office of the um, in the church that is spoken of in Ephesians, the fivefold ministry. Uh, and teachers is one of the offices, there, one of the ministries. So he's telling us not many of us should aspire to that or become teachers mm -hmm. in that office. Because those of us who are teachers and acting in such will be judged by a higher standard, he says. <clears throat> the reason for that is we've assumed greater accountability, more condemnation, if we teach incorrectly. Now, so if you do sense the calling to teach, just study to show yourself approved. Don't parrot other people's revelation. That's what I hear so many do. And you can find sermons online by the boatloads for, uh, you know, Sunday messages. You can buy them ready-made and just read them. Wow. Well, that's junk. That's somebody else's revelation, if it's a revelation at all. Mm -hmm. And it's not yours, and you have no business up there parroting it. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what he's talking about. It's actually a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Read it. Yes, Hebrews 10, 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. In other words, this is serious business. In this age and generation, we come to uh, not fear God so much. We, we, you know, people, criminals, tear up his churches. They harass his people. Mm -hmm. They have no respect for the Bible. And uh, you can see it in our culture. But God is still warning us. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It's no joking matter, in other words. Hallelujah. And so, here, First Peter says, read that. Okay. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Okay, so judgment starts here with us. Just like with the teacher having a higher standard. Mm. We're supposed to know the will of God. It's not a mystery to us. We're supposed to know the will of God. And so he's warning us here. Again, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Mm. Good morning to Edie there. Hey, Edie. Edie, yes. In Alabama, good morning. And also Adrian Smith. Adrian in Montana. Yes, yes. God bless you. Thanks for joining Adrian, it's awful early out there. 
Okay, so uh, we need to be mindful that uh, to fear God. First Corinthians eleven thirty one tells us here. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. So in other words, just allow the Holy Spirit through the Word of God to correct you gently. Mm -hmm. And uh, that should be a daily thing that we're open to correction. We're open to instruction. We're open to having God tell us where we're off base if we are. Mm -hmm. And 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says, Okay, examine our, yourselves, whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. Okay, so examine yourselves is what he's saying. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, check yourself out, make sure you're in the faith. How do I do that? You know, nobody wants to be wrong, I don't think. How do I do that? Well, here. You James. need to uh, listen to what you're saying. Yes. That's James. how you can check it out. Listen to what you're saying. Go ahead. Okay, James uh, 3, 2. For in many things we offend all. If, if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Wow. Mm -hmm. So listen to what you're saying to, you know, check yourself out. Listen to what you're saying. And... If you hear yourself talking things other than the word, then uh, correct it. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about you're fearful, your diabetes, and those kind of things, correct them. Recognize that your heart needs an adjustment. So, let's look at this. Hey, Rose is on. Hey, Rose. Hey, Rose, folks. Yes, good morning. Good morning, dear Rose. So, Everybody speaks incorrectly from time to time. I mean, we all say words sometimes we don't want to say. And then we go back and repent. Or maybe we don't even realize we said wrong things. We just say it. So, um, it, in doing that, it breaches the spirit. That's what the scriptures tell us. When you speak wrong things, offending either yourself or someone else, uh, it presents a breach in the spirit. Read that, please. Okay, Proverbs 15, verse 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. So a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. That's pretty strong. Mm. The tree of life, glory to God. Mm, well, that's yes. your tongue, your wholesome tongue well, creates in you that tree of life. But if you pervert the tongue from heart issues, mm -hmm. then there becomes a breach in the spirit realm. Your tongue or your words connect to the unseen spirit world. Mm -hmm. That's a really important point. Your words are the connector between the seen realm and the unseen realm. And your words breach that unseen realm if you start spewing off incorrect words out of your mouth. But a wholesome tongue, on the other hand, will bring to you a tree of life, eternal life. Hallelujah. So uh, that's a very important point here. But let's go back here to our uh, James. Read that again, please. Okay, for any, for, for in many things you offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. So, if we can control our tongue so that we don't offend with a word, mm -hmm. that man that does that is a perfect man. That's the first point mm -hmm. we need to look at. It's a perfect okay. man, meaning he's mature in this. He's uh, experienced, skillful. He has learned to control not only his tongue, but his heart, his thoughts, his mind. And uh, with that, he can control the whole body. Do you see that? So when this mature man has mastered this, then he controls or bridles or steers the whole body. That would mean his health. His strength, 
his direction in life, his provision, and anything else that pertains to his life. So this is pretty profound. I want you to, to get this. If you will not offend in word, you tap into the tree of life, eternal life. You just read that in Proverbs. Mm -hmm. But if you abuse it and just say anything and you spew out doubt, unbelief, anger, unforgiveness, whatever's against God, then it becomes a breach in the spirit because your words connect to the spirit, this unseen realm. And so you got to reel that back in and repent of it. But if you become mature, perfect in this, in, in controlling your words and what you say, then you are able to control your entire body. That's pretty powerful, Alan. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so let's go to the next one here. Okay, James 3.3. 3. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us um, and we turn about the whole body. So this is just an example that a horse is a large animal. Mm -hmm. And we put these little bits in their mouth. Yeah with the rider sitting on there holding the reins and turns his mouth by that bit, his head, whichever way he wants that horse to go. Yeah. And that's how he steers the horse. So it's just a great example yeah. that from your heart, the bit is in your mouth to turn your life, whichever way you decide for it to go. Mm -hmm. That's pretty strong. Yeah, that is. So he continues on here. Verse 4, read that. You behold also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they are they turned about with a very small hem, whithersoever the governor, governor listed. So he also likens the big ships. Think of those cruise ships out there. They're big. Yeah. So little things in the back steer that cruise ship. Mm. Um, rudders, we call them. And so uh, that's another great example of how the tongue is the rudder of your ship on rough waters, mm -hmm. even. But it still steers you to where you're supposed to be. And uh, but it's very important that uh, what come that you understand what comes out of the mouth, the tongue is governed by the heart. It originates in the heart. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, James doesn't talk so much about that, but we know that from other scriptures. We find that here in Matthew 12. We read it earlier, but read it again. Read okay. It. Uh, old generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Out of the abundance of the heart, the your mouth, mouth speaks. Speaks. Verse 35. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Okay. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by their words thou shalt be justified, and by their words thou shalt be condemned. So Jane, uh, Matthew here is opening to us a window to see into the spirit realm. That the words that you speak come from your heart, what you believe, and they guide your life, good or bad. And you'll be held accountable. Again, going back to the teacher is even more so accountable. But everyone will be accountable for what they say. And by your words, you'll be justified here. Or you'll be condemned. It can go either way. So you want to watch that and uh, and stay on top of that for sure. So here, let's continue on here. Mm -hmm. Read that, please, James okay. 3, 5. Verse 5. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire can do. So the tongue being a small member of your body, it has a tendency to brag, boast mm -hmm. big things. Mm -hmm. Some people worse than others. 
<laughs> but it's telling you here how great a matter a little spark sets on fire. That's what he's saying here. So a forest fire starts with a spark. And your tongue, your words, out of you, uh, uh, you know, not some famous person, but just mm -hmm. an average John Doe person, mm -hmm. your tongue sets on fire your world around you and causes a forest fire that you don't need, you don't want, and then you wonder, why, God, where are you? Well, this is where you have to start. You are today what you said yesterday. You're going to be tomorrow what you say today. So if you want to change your future, your direction, you need to change what you say today. It's pretty simple, isn't it? So let's go to the expanded version of this, James 3, if I read that. Okay. It is the same with the tongue. It is a small part of a member of the body, but it boasts about great things. A big forest fire can be started started with only a little flame. A big forest fire can yeah. be started with just a very small spark. Mm. And that would be our tongue. All right, James 3, 6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set, set on fire of hell. This has got quite a few things here, and we'll close it with this. Mm -hmm. The tongue is a fire that burns your world. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the most of the blame for what goes on in your life because you verbalize what you believe and you believe wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. So your tongue defiles, here it says, the entire body. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And not just your body, but it also affects the entire course of nature or nature's events out there. So it's not that, that's not really that unusual because Jesus in the gospel controlled the weather with his tongue, with his words. When he was on the ship asleep and uh, here in uh, Mark 4, 37 through 41, there was a great storm. He was asleep in the back of the boat. They came and said, look, we're dying. We're going to perish. Don't yeah. you care? Yeah. He rose up. He rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. And guess what? Nature obeyed him from his words. He didn't wave his hands. He didn't, uh, you know, put on a certain outfit to look like a priest. He didn't give a tithe to buy it. He stood out there on the bow of the boat and he said, peace be still. Mm -hmm. And the sea and the winds obeyed him. That's what we're saying here. This is powerful stuff. Yeah. It's powerful stuff. So the tongue, the dark side of it, it's a, it's a world of iniquity, a fire. It's setting the course of nature on fire in your life that you don't really want and, and don't want to deal with. Mm -hmm. And it, not just nature, but your your body, your health, your direction in life, everything about you. The tongue controls it. And so it's very important that you understand that uh, how, how important words are. It starts with the heart, though. It's not just words. It starts with the heart. It's what you believe from your heart mm -hmm. that's doing that. And... Uh, James is telling us here how faith works, how the spirit realm works, mm -hmm. how we can be victorious on earth in everyday situations. Guard your heart and keep your tongue, keep your mouth, mm -hmm. keep it in line with God, with love, with creativity, God's creativity. Move the mountain instead of creating the mountain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Knowledge is power. When we know these things, we're now accountable and responsible to begin to use them in our life, to exercise them in our life. So instead of saying, I'm sick, I have cancer, I have diabetes, I have tuberculosis, whatever the doctor tells you you have, mm -hmm. you say, I'm the healed of God by his yes. stripes I was healed. Amen. Amen. 
And you've got to make sure your heart believes that. It's not just good enough just to say words. You've got to have it coming from a heart of faith. You say, you say it because you believe because it. Because you have been fully persuaded. It. That's why you say it. God is true and cannot lie. And he told you that. Mm. And that's why. Well, I pray you've enjoyed this. We're out of time. But uh, we'll... The link of, of, to the test. Yeah, we want you to do the quiz, please. Yeah. Here we go, right here. And why don't you do the quiz? It's just five questions. It's pretty easy. If you haven't done any of them, you can go back and do them all. Mm. Uh, they don't take long. Mm. Uh, they're they're noted in every broadcast. Mm. And um, you get a certificate at the end of the month, which is only a couple of weeks away. You get a certificate, a beautiful certificate, that will declare and show that you have studied verse by verse the book of James in detail with us and completed it successfully. There's nobody that fails. There's no failing grade. It's merely just checking yourself mm -hmm. to make sure you understand what we've discussed. And if you don't, then we want to talk about it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we love you. God bless you. Yes. Amen. Thank bless you for you joining all. Thank us. Thank you. And we'll see you again tomorrow at the same time, 5.30 in the morning. Absolutely. Amen. God bless you. Let's pray for him. Okay. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, yes, for these yes. precious saints. Thank you, Lord. are faithful to be with us on yes, this broadcast you, daily, Lord. Lord. We thank you, Lord, that they are fed by your spirit, yes, Lord, and your word. Mm. And that they grow Hallelujah. to be that mature man or woman that bridles Hallelujah. their tongue. Yes, and that has you, creative ability from you, Lord, yes. to move the mountains in their life. Yes, and to keep their body free of sickness and disease yes, and to live the fullness that you have provided for them. Thank we you. thank you, Father. Thank you for your healing virtue that's flowing you, Lord, into the precious thank people you, that we've been praying for. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Some are, are near death, Lord, but we've rebuked it and yes, called their spirits Jesus back name, and will not allow them name. to die. Life, Lord, in Jesus' name. name. In Jesus' name. Drop, you will live and not die. Yes, in Jesus' name. And Hallelujah. declare the glory of God. In Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you are healed. In Jesus' name. Of the rose in Jesus' name. In you Jesus are healed. Name. Ali, you are healed in Jesus' in name. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for Hallelujah. It. Praise you. Saints, we love you. May Thank God you richly Amen. bless you. In Jesus', Jesus name. name. Amen. We'll see you in the morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye. Okay, God bless you all. Tomorrow again, 5.30 in the morning, same time. Bye. You have been watching God is Real, airing weekdays Monday through Friday at 5.30 a.m. with Pastors Chuck and Arlen Kennedy. Brought to you by Faith International Christian Center in Bradenton, Florida. If you would like to reach out to us, our phone number is 941-447-4538. Thank you so much and God bless.